right, you guys, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but hey, you know what? Times have come, times have gone. Things are a little different now. I've got my own house, and I've had my own problems. Now, I am not driving my WRX. I am actually driving my wife's WRX today for this WRX Files video. And as you can see, it's just a night drive. And, well, here's the reason why I'm driving this. All the problems that you saw in the videos that I've talked about before with the WRX, well, I got plagued with a lot of them. In fact, I have to actually replace the engine on the car. After fighting with it for a long time, trying to figure out why the car was misfiring, and it always came up as a misfire cylinder for, and a lot of people tell me vacuum leaks and all these other sorts of problems with the car, I could never get why it would throw a misfire cylinder for code. And I tried everything in the book to, to test it. I did the, the swapping coil packs, I swapped fuel injectors, I did massive amounts of cleaning to the engine, the intake manifold, the throttle body, changed sensors, cleaned sensors. I did everything under the sun. And then I finally took it to the shop, um, my father-in-law's shop, uh, where the man does amazing work, he does a great job, um, but it just never worked out. And we did a compression test, and that's where things became disappointing. Now his gauge did read a little bit low anyways, but the cylinder basically registered almost no compression whatsoever in the cylinder itself. It was like, I think, maybe 40 PSI on the, on the crank, you know, on the, on the four rotation crank. And if you floored it, you might get up to 80 PSI in cylinder four. So we knew cylinder four was bad. I don't know how bad it is because we, did, we didn't take apart the motor. And just because I built the car not to make five, 600 horsepower like everybody wants me to make and all that jazz, I, I, I built the car to be a good, reliable, fun daily driver. So the car doesn't make a ton of horsepower. Okay, it is, yeah, it's right around the 300 wheel, 300, 320 wheel horsepower range, depending on whose dyno you're on. But I didn't build the car to be fast in a straight line. So I know everybody's going to say, well, why didn't you just, you know, take the motor apart, build the engine, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. I have a family, okay? So money isn't all there to go and build the engine. Also, both my wife and I, we work, so we both need cars. Now, thankfully, right now, we work offset schedules, so the days that I'm off, she works, and the days that, you know, you know, my schedule rotates. So, so thankfully, we can work it out to where we can use one car right now. But it is a little inconvenient because you're stuck at home for God knows how many hours a day. You can't go anywhere because you don't have a car. And with a three-year-old daughter, that doesn't work out too well. She wants to go to the park and she wants to go do this. She doesn't really want to stay at home. She wants to play. Well, the, the car got plagued. And I decided to just throw another EJ205 in there, another two liter factory engine. Uh, we ordered one 
It came out of a, a Saab 92X, which if anybody knows about Subarus, that Saab is a Subaru with Saab badges on it, so it's called a Saabaru. But anyways, it's, it, it's kind of a good thing I think I got that motor from a Saab. I really do. I think because of it coming out of a Saab, I don't think it's going to be beat up on as much as a, a vehicle like a WRX that is very well known. The Saab is, 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 has always kind of been a, a dark horse because not a lot of people know that it's really just a Subaru. So I, I think that's a good thing. I really do. It was basically a crazy expensive WRX, so not a whole lot of people bought them. And the people that did buy them didn't really modify them because they just thought it was a Saab. So it took a lot of time for people to figure out that it was a Subaru. So we have another EJ205 that we're putting in the car. It is currently, presently being put into the car. I have been told that there, I haven't really seen the work that's going on because I'm not gonna lie, I was really frustrated and mad and everything, so I am having it professionally put in. I am not going to deal with it. I know it's not a hard job to do, but I just really don't wanna deal with that problem. So I have decided to just let the professionals do what they do best and work on the car. So, here I am driving my wife's car and hers is an 04 WRX and you can kind of see the, the, you know it's got the cup holder up here on like the 05 and it doesn't have the automatic climate controls but you know for her car it does very well a uh, little bit a little bit about this if you haven't seen the other video where I just do a review on this um, a little bit about this uh, stock EJ205 engine. It's uh, got a TDO4 turbo. It's got a OBX uh, intake on it, which is basically like a Cobb knockoff. Uh, looks just like a Cobb. Uh, it's got the uh, Grimsby radiator shroud on it, Turbo XS top mount intercooler, which is my old top mount intercooler. Uh, three inch catless downpipe, three inch uh, knockoff <laughs> cob exhaust. It's eBay, but it looks like a cob. Um, and cob access port, uh, stage two tune on it. <laughs> and you know, STI hood scoop. Um, this car does have a custom paint job to it um, that we did. It does have a uh, skunk two lowering springs, which I know Skunk 2 primarily makes parts for like Hondas and stuff, but we got a really killer deal on this car. And as you can hear listening to it, and you can see by my hands, <laughs> um, this car is an automatic transmission. And a lot of people will say that it's, you know, an auto tragic and it's kind of boring and whatnot. Hey, you know what, as a daily driver, this is actually a pretty good car. I, I have to give it that. but. You know, for a car to just drive around and, and enjoy, this car is really not that bad. So I, I, I give it a lot of credit where credit is due. It's, it's actually not as bad as it seems. This, this is probably the more responsive automatic transmission uh, in, in your mindset of thinking back in 2004, this is probably the more responsive of an automatic transmission than probably about any other manufacturer out there, uh, which watered theirs down to comfort where this one actually had performance in mind, so it doesn't shift exactly the smoothest, uh, where, you know, other automatic transmissions were a little bit smoother. But again, you know, that's besides the point that, you know, I've done a review video on that. If you want, go watch the video, it's on my channel. Uh, but as far as my car was concerned, that's why I wanted to talk to you guys about it. You know, this is Subaru's, they're good cars. Now, a little bit about that engine, and I know I've talked about my car, and I don't think I've really talked about much of its history. When I bought it with 50,000 miles, it only had, uh, you know, it only had 50,000 miles on it, but the previous owner had done a lot of modifications to the car, and he ran nitrous on the motor. I don't know how long, I don't know how many shots, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know what kind of jet was on it, but all the evidence was there 
that nitrous had been run. As far as the fuel lines being cut, as far as the uh, the factory top mount intercooler having a, a bung plug uh, welded in it uh, to, to seal it back up again, those were all evidence of nitrous being run on the car. So that's kind of why I wanted to, to do a video on this. Is it's it, there's there's quite a few things that can cause a possible ringland failure, and I have a feeling that I had a ringland failure, but it's not quite common with the EJ205 engine. So I don't know until we dig apart the motor. I know I could have built it. I know I could have had it, but I don't want to deal with the downtime. I didn't want to deal with the expensive parts. I just wanted to have something that I could drive, and, and the quickest turnaround time was to get another engine, which is what I did. So, it ran nitrous on it, it, it had been beat up, I'm not going to lie, I ran it untuned for a long time when I was running 18G on 565s, I ran it untuned with a basic, you know, off the shelf cob map, and so, and, and I've learned that everything is about tuning with these cars and it's unfortunate that I put myself in that situation but I look at it this way I, I if there was ringland failure I've had ringland failure going on for the, as far as the evidence was concerned I've had ringland failure going on for about 40,000 miles in about four four or five years and if that's the case, if it was ringland failure, that was the, the, the cause of this issue with low compression, then, you know, then I know that the motor had been beat on before I bought it. I had problems with it during my ownership. And then after my, my, uh, my ownership of the, you know, of that particular engine, it just kind of has gone 40,000 miles of basically being on life support until it just finally let itself go. Now, with the way that it was running, it, it's a good possibility it might not be, uh, you know, piston rings. It could be a, a valve, a cracked valve. I don't know until we take it apart. Um, but... I, I needed a, a motor for turnaround because I didn't want to plague my wife with not having a car and and you know all those problems uh, associated with with just having one car and, and a family. So I guys wanted to give you this is more like an update of my my car and why I'm not driving it. Um, the the problems that that I had you know just. If you own a WRX, if you plan on owning a WRX, it doesn't matter what year it is. A, tuning is everything, okay? Even if it's just bone stock, tune the car. Seriously, it, it makes a world of difference. Contact your tuner, contact a tuner. I can recommend, uh, you know, some guys for you. Um, but contact a tuner, that is probably your number one thing. The other thing, the cars are not meant to be beat on every single day for long periods of time. It's a daily driver, drive it like a daily driver, it's only supposed to have that much power in spurts, not all the time. Uh, so take care of that car, take care of the engine, take care of those things. Um, you know, just, again, it, it, it's, it comes down to just proper maintenance, take care of the car don't overdo like what the previous owner did like nitrous and whatnot on his car just take care of it just do what you have to do to take care of it and hopefully i'll have my car back on the road here soon i've had some i've been told that the uh the the motor has had some aesthetic work done to it i don't know what it looks like yet um it's kind of a surprise for me um so i guess you guys will see it with me and, uh, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy this video as much as, I, you know, it pains me to want you guys to enjoy this video because it's more of a heartbreak video than it is, you know, my typical video. So, update will come real soon. And 
continue watching, continue watching my other videos. Um, I'll hopefully have some more up here soon. So I apologize about the wait, guys. We just had a lot going on buying a house, uh, having the car issues, uh, doing a couple other things here and there. Uh, I did a video with Mike Baranis, uh, you know, where he reviewed my car. Uh, and right soon after that, that's when I started having problems and it wasn't his fault. Please don't blame him. It wasn't his fault. Um, the, the motor's been going out for a long, long time before that. So it just, it just finally met its breaking point. So, um, it's just continue watching. I'll give you guys an update soon on what's going on and, uh, see you guys later. Enjoy yourselves and enjoy your cars. Thank you.